Jermaine Cole is a rapper, singer, songwriter, and record producer from North Carolina and has taken the world by storm since his initial debut. He's been in the majority of hip hop fans top three over the past decade. He's the founder of Dreamville, the Dreamville Foundation, has multiple platinum records and has won numerous awards. So how exactly did J. Cole dominate the past decade? Jermaine Lamar Cole was born on January 28, 1985 to K and James Cole on a military base in Frankfurt, West Germany. His father is an African-American veteran who served in the U.S. Army and his mother is of European descent who was a postal worker for the U.S. Postal Service. When Cole was just eight months old, his mother moved him and his brother back to the U.S. and settled in Fayetteville, North Carolina. His father didn't follow suit and pretty much abandoned the family at that point. This would obviously affect Cole growing up as he lacked a male father figure and would express this throughout his music. Cole began rapping at the age of 12 and began to see it as a potential profession. When he was 13, his mom bought a house, moving them from Lewis Street a mile down the road to 2014 Forest Hills Drive, which would ultimately become the title and inspiration for his third studio album. He would actually go on to purchase that property years later after it had been foreclosed on his mom while he was attending college. The goal of the purchase was to buy the house back he had grown up in, but would also be used to provide housing for families in need, close to rent free. My name is J. Cole, Jermaine Cole, and welcome to my house. This is 2014 Forest Hills Drive, Fayetteville, North Carolina, 28303. My goal and my intention uh, is some family will get to move into this place very close to rent free. The family would live there for roughly two years, just long enough to get them on their feet, then would be made available for the next family in need. He describes his room as being the place where he first started dreaming the dream, the place where he became more introspective, writing rhymes, rehearsing in front of the mirror, and vibing out to various cassette tapes and CDs. When he hit 14 years old, Cole was a big fan of the local Fayetteville rap duo Bomb Shelter. He would continuously hit them up through email and one day they finally hit him back saying they were doing a show at the skate zone and told him to come through. They had a part of the show where they would let people come on stage and rhyme in front of the crowd. He would go on to perform that night and impress the duo. After the performance, they started letting him come to the studio and it was there where he was first exposed to real studio equipment and first laid eyes on an MPC. Afterward, he would constantly beg his mom to buy him one until about a year and a half later when she finally bought him an ASRX Pro. After receiving it, he began learning how to make his own beats and continued to write under the pseudonym, The Therapist. Man, Sean, from around the way, some been down from day one. Never been known for mistakes, but was bound to make one. Her name was Nina. See, he was all about the cash flow till she came and had this man pussy whipped to the max, yo. Fast forward to 2003, Cole would graduate from Terry Sanford High School with a 4.2 GPA. He only applied to colleges in New York City because he figured he had a better shot at securing a record deal. He eventually would attend St. John's University located in Queens. Cole initially majored in computer science, but then switched to business and communications after witnessing the life of a lonely computer science professor. St. John's was also where he would meet his friend, manager, and future co-founder of Dreamville, Ibrahim Hamad. Hamad described Cole as a normal dude who he'd see around while playing basketball. Hamad would start bringing him around local courts and introducing him to people he knew in the city as he was a Queens native. While in NYC, Cole made it an effort to attend events around the city in the hopes of gaining connections. He can actually be seen in the crowd of the 2006 documentary Dave Chappelle's Block Party. There's also footage of him at L.A. Reed's son, Aaron Reed's Sweet 16 birthday party. After hearing about the stars that would be present that night, Cole decided to go. While in the crowd, you can see him wearing a Produce for Jay-Z or Die Trying t-shirt. This wouldn't be the last time he would try to capture Hov's attention. In 2007, Jay-Z was on the verge of releasing his 10th studio album, American Gangster. Cole would catch the press release and it gave him an idea. He figured Hove was probably still recording for the album, so he went home that night and made a beat titled On Top of the World. He eventually made an entire beat CD, hopped on the train, bought some liquor with a friend, and waited outside Rock the Mic studio for two hours in the rain. He eventually sees Jay pull up in a black phantom with his security and attempts to hand him the CD. The plan would ultimately fall short as Hove would pretty much reject it, directing him to give it to one of his associates behind him. Listen to, hot. Listen to the hook. It was so perfect for American Gangster, dog. I, matter of fact, I was at my job. I was at work. 
I went on, I because at my job I didn't do shit, nigga. I was a matter of fact, I was, I was telemarketing, mm. but I never made no calls. I was just always on the internet, <laughs> on the fucking rap blogs and shit. And I seen, I think it was all hip hop or something. They had a a, a post like Jay Z new album, blah blah blah, and they they had the concept and all that. They even had the artwork done. I was like, oh shit, this is it, God. Like, <laughs> God, had to, God, God gave me a sign. I thought, and I had, was like, yo, I'm gonna go home and do some shit. I was gonna make it. That's why I was so hyped to go on the yeah. train. So I went home and I did this. This is the first shit I did. And it was like, I didn't know nothing about the album other than the concept, read up on it a little bit, and then did this, the beat and the hook. Despite the rejection from his childhood idol, Cole wouldn't give up and he continued to try and figure out ways to get his name out there. Hamad suggested that he put together a mixtape to help spread the word. On May 4th, 2007, Cole would release his first official mixtape titled The Come Up, which would generate some buzz around the city. He would then go on to release the video for the album single, Simba. Around this time, Cole and Hamad were thinking about ways to expand the brand. They figured Hove had Rockefeller and Diddy had Bad Boy, so they began brainstorming about what their quote unquote thing was. Cole eventually came up with the name Dreamville, basically combining Fayetteville where he started and moving to the city of dreams, New York City. At the time, it was really just a merch company to start, but then eventually would sign artists under its umbrella later down the line. Cole would go on to graduate college, but although he technically graduated, he wouldn't actually receive his diploma until 2015 because he owed the school money for a library book. After graduation, he felt a bit lost. He saw all his friends applying to get real jobs while he was continuing to pursue his rap career. On top of that, financially, he was still struggling as he was falling behind on rent. Luckily, his old landlord, Muhammad, who Cole has referenced in multiple tracks, believed in him so much that he allowed him to put months of rent on layaway while Cole figured it out. Okay, back when I was sleeping in my mama crib, but even back when I was up there in Muhammad crib, paying $1,700 for the rent, money well spent. Cole's first big break came when his manager at the time, Mike Rooney, would pull some strings to lead them to a meeting with Mark Pitts. Pitts was Biggie Small's former manager and By Storm CEO at the time, so he had a lot of industry connections. Rooney was the nephew of super producer Corey Rooney. They initially met at the Notorious Baseline Recording Studios in Manhattan. Cole saw him as a well-connected person and would message Rooney on MySpace. One of the first songs Rooney would ever hear from Cole would be the song School Days, which was featured on Cole's second official mixtape, The Warm Up. Yeah, back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. But some days I sit and wish I was a kid again. Yeah, I sit and wish I was a kid again. Yeah, I sit and wish yo. He saw something special in the rapper and in an interview with Revolt, Rooney stated, That was my pitch, to drive him to my uncle's mansion, show him a bunch of plaques. The mansion was in Upper Brookville, New York. It's literally down the street from where Mark Anthony and J-Lo lived. It was also around this time where Cole would be making music toward his classic mixtape, The Warm Up. Some of them were done years before anyone had heard them. Grown Simba and Hold It Down were done in 07 and Can I Live was done in 08. Yeah, you already got it. Like, I don't even got a ton of shit. You got the levels right? I'm about to murder. Yeah, uh, and hey, if my heart stopped pumping the more, I don't feel no sorrow, cause life is hard mentally, and everything is meant to be. Sometimes I He would also work with publishing companies to get producers and writers to sessions. At the time, Cole was working as a telemarketer on top of his classes, so it would have been difficult otherwise to get this done. Rooney actually knew Kirk Lightburn, who was Pitts' cousin. Lightbird would one day randomly play Cole's song Lights Please in front of Pitts, to which he immediately said that he wanted to meet the artist. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. I had this little bad thing, something like them tens. She gave a nigga mad brain, something like the whiz. But you see the sad thing, fucking where the is, is the chick ain't even had brains, dummy like a bitch. So I tried to show her. Rooney was instrumental in the project's completion as he would trade financial compensation for the artist to record in professional recording spaces like 333 Studios and KMA Studios in Manhattan. 
The meetings would ultimately go well, but they wouldn't hear back from Pitts for three months or so. After so long, they pretty much assumed that the opportunity wasn't happening. Little did they know, Pitts actually had plans to present it to none other than Jay-Z. At that time, Hov was just starting Rock Nation. One day, Pitts played him lights, please, and Jay, just like Pitts, wanted to meet him. This led to multiple meetings afterwards, and Cole would eventually become the very first artist signed to Rock Nation in 2009. Shortly after the signing, Cole would begin putting on the finishing touches to this classic mixtape, The Warm Up. He would drop the tape on June 15, 2009, and the project immediately spread across college campuses like wildfire. It immediately resonated with listeners as Cole was the quintessential example and leader of the new generation in hip hop. He didn't necessarily carry the street image like his predecessors, but he related to his audience by being relatable with his subject matter. Cole personified the normal guy who played basketball and went to university to pursue his dreams with the do-it-yourself music that was pivotal to the blog era. Derek Acoli, Dreamville's head of strategy and marketing, told Revolt TV, After the warm-up, I was tuned in and then I found Drake. Then I found Kid Cudi. It made me want to start checking for new people because if this dude is that dope and he was right under my nose, who else is out there? It really speaks to the blog era. The blog era's legacy is Kendrick Lamar, Cole, and Drake. Those are the people that carried that whole era. The following year in 2010, he would make the double XL freshman list and he would also embark on a college tour performing at Syracuse and Rutgers amongst others. On May 31st, he would premiere his first shot at a single with the record Who Dat? And around that same time, he would also be featured on the record All I Want Is You by Miguel. Damn, damn, cold world. I never thought I'd see the day that you my old girl. Now I'm stuck here hollering at old girl. Got one, got two, three, four girls. So ultimately, things kept snowballing for Cole as he continued to drop records and build buzz around his highly anticipated debut album. On November 12, 2010, Cole dropped his third official mixtape titled Friday Night Lights. The tape was actually originally slated to be called Vilmatic. Most of the songs on the mixtape were initially meant to be on his debut album, but because the label didn't believe that the project would sell, he was forced to redo the whole thing. The tape would become the second most searched and trending topic on Google and Twitter following its release and it included the popular record In the Morning featuring Drake. Baby, you summertime, fine. I let you get on top, I be the underline. I'm trying to get beside you like the number nine dime. You fine as hell. I guess I met you for a reason, only time can tell. The project would consist of features from Wale, Kanye West, Big Sean, and Omen, amongst others, and would go on to win Best Mixtape of the Year at the 2011 BET Hip Hop Awards. Friday Night Lights was a certified classic. In my opinion, this project is J. Cole's crown jewel and Honestly, Hungry Cole is probably the best Cole we've ever seen. On this project, Cole displays a hunger and tenacity, and the way he rhymes on this is is unlike anything I've ever heard from Cole. It just, it, it, it was really touching. Hey, I got a dollar in the dream. Saw the nigga got so it was about that green, and I'm all up in the spot, hey. Yeah, the middle state of a young black teen is conflicted The fast life I done seen on the screen is addictive Money and clothes I done dreamed about And all the hoes that I think about They tell me am I wrong for visualizing material shit I never had Waving gats instead of flags, the American dream Why do we cling to the villains? Anyways, fast forward to September 27, 2011 Following three successful mixtapes Cole would drop his debut album, Cold World, The Sideline Story the album was mostly produced by Cole himself, just like a lot of his other projects, but it also featured production from the legendary No ID on the record Never Told. The project would include four guest verses from Trey Songz, Jay-Z, Missy Elliott, and Drake. The album debuted at number one on Billboard and would sell 218,000 copies first week, surpassing many people's expectations. The album was met with mixed reviews, but the numbers were undeniable, showing that Cole was one of the bright young stars said to be a major part of the new generation going forward. In 2012, Cole would be nominated for Best New Artist at the Grammys and also played for the Eastern team in the NBA All-Star Weekend Celebrity Game. Fast forward, on November 5th, 2012, Cole announced the title to his second studio album titled Born Center, which was scheduled to release sometime in 2013. In promotion of the upcoming project, he released the EP titled Truly Yours on February 12th, then followed up a few months later with the extension of the series Truly Yours 2 on April 30th. The set release date was originally for June 25th, 2013, but once Cole found out Kanye was going to be dropping Yeezus a week before, he moved his date up a week. In a 2013 interview, Cole stated that this is art and I can't compete against the Kanye West celebrity and the status that he's earned from just being a genius. 
but I can't put my name in the hat and tell you that I think my album is great and you be the judge and you decide. The album would eventually surpass his debut studio album, selling 297,000 copies first week. The project was led by four official singles, Power Trip, Crooked Smile, Forbidden Fruit, and She Knows. In April of 2014, during the time of the Michael Brown shooting in Ferguson, Missouri, that led to nationalized protesting and riots within the city, he would release the record Be Free in response to the events and would also perform the record on SNL. All we want to do is take the chains off. All we want to do is break the chains off, yeah. All we want to do is be free. All we want to do is be free. He would go on to visit Ferguson to meet with protesters and organizers to discuss the civil unrest taking place within the city. Later that year, on November 16th, 2014, Cole released a video trailer where he announced he'd be releasing his third studio album titled 2014 Forest Hills Drive on December 9th. The album title was named after his childhood home back in North Carolina. The album would again surpass his previous project's numbers by selling 353,000 first week. Moving forward to 2016, J. Cole dropped his fourth studio album, For Your Eyes Only, on December 9th. A week before the release, Cole released a 40-minute documentary titled Eyes on Title. It featured behind-the-scenes footage including two music videos, False Prophets, and Everybody Dies, which neither made the album, but were both probably the most notable of the project. Return of the Mr. Burn suckers, not herpes infested, just perfectly blessed with a style that you can't F with. Protection recommended, cause code a definition of a weapon that can end it. You know, mass destruction when I mash the button, I take your favorite major rapper, left them independent. It would debut at number one and would sell 492,000 album equivalents first week. On April 16th, 2018, Cole announced a surprise event for fans at the Grand Mercy Theater in New York City. The event turned out to be a listening party for his album KOD, which was released just four days later. The album had multiple meetings, including Kids on Drugs, King Overdosed, and Kill Our Demons. The album touched on multiple subjects including addiction, drug abuse, and greed. Around this time, rappers Little Pump and Smoke Perp took issue with the song 1985 in particular off the album thinking that it was directed at them. When they them kids is listening, gonna grow up and get too old for that shit that made you blow up. Now your show's looking like cause they don't show up, which unfortunately means the money slow up. They teased a song called FJ Cole and there's a video of Smoke Perp leading a FJ Cole chant in Atlanta. Nigga, FJ Cole. These events would eventually lead to J. Cole and Lil Pump sitting down for an hour long interview. The 1985 effect would lead to be true as Perp and Lil Pump's careers would pretty much take a nosedive and turn into what Cole predicted on the record. On the day of its release, it would go on to surpass Drake's Views album as most streams in a single day on Apple Music. The album sold 397,000 album equivalents. Songs from the album were featured in the 2018 NBA playoffs and finals promotion for ESPN. Never has it seemed this lopsided. Cause them boys from Golden State get buckets. Can Cleveland apply pressure? Can Brian make it up the steepest mountain ever climb? Too many times I swallow my pride. I'm cracking a smile. I'm dying inside. My Cavs, Warriors, the NBA Finals. On January 6, 2019, Cole announced on Twitter promoting Dreamville's Revenge of the Dreamers 3. The recording for the project took place within a 10-day period, January 6 to January 16th in Atlanta. A total of 343 artists and producers were invited to the sessions within an outside of Dreamville, including Big Crit, Mike Will Made It, DJ Khaled, Rick Ross, and more. On January 23rd, he would go on to release the project's first single, Middle Child, which would go on to be Cole's highest charting single. Cole would go on to perform the 2019 All-Star Game Halftime Show in Charlotte. Revenge of the Dreamers would go on to sell 115,000 album equivalents first week. The project would get nominated for Best Rap Album, and Middle Child and Down Bad were both nominated for Best Rap Performance. Although he wouldn't receive a Grammy for either of those, he did win a Grammy for 21 Savage's A Lot Record, which would be his first Grammy win. On June 16, 2020, J. Cole would release his first song of 2020, Snow on the Bluff, soon after the murder of George Floyd that led to criticism from No Name and other rappers on Twitter. Niggas be thinking I'm deep, intelligent, fooled by my college degree. My IQ is average, there's a young lady out there, she way smarter than me. I scroll through her timeline in these wild times and I started to read. She mad at these crackers, she mad at these capitalists, mad at these murder police. He would release a promotional EP titled Lewis Street featuring the songs The Climb Back and Lion King on Ice. On December 29th, 2020, he would post a photo on Instagram 
where he showed a list called the fall off era the caption stating that he still has some goals for he scrams the offseason would be released on may 14 2021 and it was executively produced by t-minus and would eventually go on to sell 282,000 album equivalents on august of 2020 it was reported that master p said that cole was training for the nba on may 10 2021 cole signed a three-game contract with the rwanda-based patriots basketball club in the africa basketball league we go on to make his professional debut on may 16th against the river hoopers where he finished with three points rebounds and two assists in 17 minutes in his three games playing he scored five points had three assists and five rebounds in 45 minutes of gameplay on may 19 2022 he signed with the scarborough shooting stars of the canadian elite basketball league in four games with the stars he averaged 2.4 points 0.6 rebounds and 0.4 assists while shooting 50 percent from three-point range so j cole has had a long and illustrious career he has won a ton of awards has dropped classic projects it's gonna be exciting to see where he takes his career it's it's evident that he's been hinting at retirement for quite a while but we'll see exactly where it goes and as for now all we can do is wait and see